Welcome to Modi Makes. What's good, everybody? My name is Modi. This is Modi Makes, and today. I'm gonna be taking my background texturing work from last week's video to the next level by using a much larger canvas and adding a ton more layers to it. Now, if you saw last week's video, it is no secret at all that I was extremely happy with this new technique that I'm using. Well, new to me, it's not a new technique by any means, but new to my art of creating this nice textured background with different uses of spray paint textures and using a crumpled up piece of newspaper to get a nice craggle texture going throughout it that just gives it a lot more of a painterly feel a lot more of a professional feel and just makes all of my pieces a little bit less flat than they were before so if you haven't seen that video check that one out and come back to here so you know what I'm talking about because we're just gonna get right into it and no more explanation is going to be needed if you've already been prepped so I'm gonna take this huge canvas and set it up on my spray table to get ready to paint that background this canvas has a ton of colors and textures on it from the painting that was already on there this nice abstract painting that was even signed by the old artist which made me feel a little bit bad about going over it but you know I found it at Goodwill so it is what it is I couldn't help myself from painting on this canvas when I saw it but because it has all that texture and all those colors already laid in there I'm gonna start by hitting the entire thing with a flat white Check this out, man. His signature is so strong, it refuses to get covered up. I respect that. Right on. Good for you, Sesum. I think. I have no idea. <laughs> Once I've finished putting that initial layer of white on, I'm gonna come back in with a nice, bright, slightly greenish blue color and hit the canvas with an entire flat layer of that as well. While that paint is still wet, I'm gonna grab a piece of newspaper and crumple it up into a ball and just start dabbing and scraping away at that wet layer of blue paint to expose some of the white from below and even some of the other colors from the older painting that was on there. Then I'm going to come back with that white spray paint and spray it directly onto that crumpled up piece of newspaper and then start dabbing and scraping that with the wet paint all over it to get this nice almost abstracted cloud-like texture going on over that blue to turn it into a beautiful textured sky. With that all finished, I'm gonna bring in a circular stencil. And to make sure there's no overspray because the edges of the stencil are really close to the negative area, I'm going to cover up the rest of the canvas with some more of that newspaper. Then I'm gonna come in and hit that stencil with a bright, vibrant red. This red is going to serve as a sunset sitting on the sky. But to make that sun more bright and have more varied color, I'm gonna come in with an orange, spray that directly onto the piece of newspaper and dab and scrape that all over inside of that stenciled area. And then I'm gonna come in with a bright yellow color on top of that. And just like I did on top of the blue background color, I'm going to lay on some speckled spray paint texture to get some nice drips and drops all over. Finally, with that sun completed, I'm going to tape off an area at the bottom of the canvas. Grab a piece of board to stop any overspray, and I'm going to hit the entire thing with a dark desaturated olive green color. Then I'm going to take a black and spray that onto the piece of newspaper and dab and scrape that all across the green area there. And just like the last two, come in with some nice spray splatter texture from both the colors. And then the most satisfying part of the video, removing the tape to see that beautiful clean line going right across. So, so, so nice. 
Okay, with the background finished and looking fantastic in my opinion. In fact, I like it so much, I almost don't wanna paint on top of it, but that would be boring for a video and it wouldn't really make sense with the style I have created for myself. So I'm gonna take that over to the studio to get ready to paint on top of this piece. Now this canvas is way too large for my normal table that I use and I would not be able to film anything about the actual painting process if I tried to use it on that table. So I'm gonna be pulling out my illustration table to set up the canvas on there. First things first, as always, I need to get my sketch down. And normally I would use my newsprint paper with a doodle grid and some transfer paper to get that down. But I'm thinking to myself, because there's so much texture and variety on this background, I can actually use the background itself as my doodle grid. It was a rather tricky process making sure that I was finding the right different little speckles and blots of paint because, you know, they're all really abstracted and they're just kind of shapes and colors. It was hard to like make sure I was really hitting the right area. But I think I was able to pull it off quite effectively and it actually probably ended up saving me quite a bit of time in the end of the day anyways. But regardless, now that I have my sketch set up on the canvas, it's time to grab the almighty Posca pens and get ready for the actual painting process. Well, the background was actually quite a bit of painting to be done, so I guess it's not fair to say that, but my character painting process, my subject painting process. I'm gonna start as always going from top left to bottom right, laying down a nice black line work on all of the sketch lines so that I know where to put my color fills in afterwards. I don't have to worry too much about these lines right now because they're all gonna get covered up later and I'm gonna add in a lot more variety in line weight going from thick to thin. So I'm able to just kind of loosely do this. However, obviously I still wanna keep it as clean as possible because I'm kind of neurotic about those things. Now with all that initial line work laid down, we can get into the coloring process and with you guys actually being able to tell what I'm putting onto the canvas now, I can finally start talking about what the subject for this painting is. I'm tentatively titling this piece The Flight and that is because it is going to be a ginormous blimp that looks remarkably like a dart with a little cabin that kind of looks like a trailer or maybe an RV sort of a Winnebago looking shape holding on the bottom of that with a rope coming out from the bottom of the RV looking thing and carrying a ginormous sauropod up into the air. The coloring was going beautifully and smoothly for most of this process, getting a nice opaque layer down. All the colors were working out great up until this one point where I realized that my light pink color that I like to use a lot had actually ran out in both the pens that I thought I had. So I switched over to this new pen that looked like it was the exact same color as those ones for the underside of the sauropod's neck, but then it turned out that it was actually a, a darker pink color with glitter in it. Oh, it's glitter. Fuck. <laughs> That's why. <clears throat> so, I ended up having to switch that one over to a darkish lavender color that I think would work well with the underside of the tail that's a darker purple color. This piece was inspired by an old upper playground tee that I picked up in Portland a long time ago that I always loved of this little tiny butterfly flying away with an elephant tied to it via a very thin string. Now I didn't want to copy it exactly or anything and obviously I wanted to put my own spin on it and I'm a huge dinosaur nerd and I just love dinosaurs in general so I thought this this whole idea of the blimp carrying the sauropod was gonna be the right way to go for my style and my aesthetic. So with that main bodying of color completed and these nice little coupled 
sort of Samurai Jack inspired trees at the bottom all painted in, I can finally go back over and do that top layer of line work. And this is where everything needs to be clean and you need to be very careful with your line work. Plus, like I said, I'm gonna be adding in a lot of thicker and thinner parts of these lines to make it very tasty. So I came in with three different sizes of the Posca markers, PC3M, PC5M, and PC8K chisel tip question mark? Let me check that. <laughs> I was correct from my memory, good. Oh. <laughs> Good stuff. PC8K chisel tip black Posca marker. That one is to use to get the very, very thick lines that I can then fade in using the smaller and smaller Posca markers to get these clean tapered lines going through all of all the piece that accentuates certain parts and lets other parts fall away into the background and just makes it overall more interesting to look at. And as always, with all of that line work on the outlines completed, we come back in to do our final detail work, mostly some hash line work as I use a lot in my pieces and a little bit of patterning work to break up some of the larger areas of flat color and just to give everything a little bit more texture on the foreground. Though not too much because I like that idea of separating the subject matter from the background using that heavily textured background painting to contrast the flatter painting on top and make them really stand out from each other. And with that detail work completed, the painting is finished and ready to look into those sexy final shots. Well, there you have it, my peoples. The flight is complete. So let me know what you guys thought of the piece down in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a like. That would be fantastic. And if you like me, you like the channel, and you want to help support me, the number one thing that you can do is to subscribe. I really couldn't thank you enough if you did. It means the world to me. And with all that out of the way, and without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace! Thanks for watching.